Hello there, it's your friendly librarian here, and I've got a few tips on troubleshooting common issues that you will run into when administering the NWEA MAP test. We're focusing on two issues that come up very commonly. Uh, the first one is that the student cannot advance to the next question, usually because the next button either isn't visible or it's, it's there, but clicking on it doesn't do anything. And the other issue is if the computer freezes or malfunctions in the middle of the test, or if you need to switch the student to a different computer in the middle of the test, there are a few steps that you need to follow. So let's deal first with that they can't advance to the next question. As I said, uh, this is a situation where the next button is there and you're trying to click on it, but it's just not going to the next question. Or maybe it's zoomed in too much and you can't even see the next button. So the very first thing to do is to read carefully and make sure that directions have been followed. Uh, a lot of times when this comes up, it's because the question was asking the student to select three answers and they only chose one or they're supposed to click and drag something somewhere instead of just selecting it. And so at a glance, it seems like the question was answered, uh, but then you realize that it wasn't done completely and that's why it's not letting you go to the next question. Now, if that's not the case, uh, you can tell that it has been done correctly, then what you're going to need to do is refresh the page. But this is a little bit tricky because there is in the lockdown browser, there's no refresh button to click on like there normally is. So in order to refresh the page, uh, you'll use a backup. So if you're on a Chromebook, uh, then you'll notice right on the keyboard on the top row, close to the left side, you see it circled here, is a reload button uh, that just looks like an arrow going in a circle, just like the refresh button on an internet browser. So you want to push that button on the physical keyboard to reload the page. And when you do this, the student will get a different question, but at least the student will be able to continue forward in the test. And in most cases, this works. And if you're on a Windows computer rather than a Chromebook, then you'll just do the same thing by tapping the F5 button on the keyboard. Also, that's their manual reload button. And this also works with um, low level freezing issues, like if the screen goes all white or something like that, try refreshing the page before panicking and doing other steps because in mo many cases that fixes the problem. Now this next one uh, is a little bit more detailed but still pretty doable once you get the hang of it. Uh, when the computer freezes or malfunctions in the middle of a test. So I'm going to talk through the steps first and then I'm going to show you in a screencast. Uh, so as I said, uh, the first thing you should do in this situation is try refreshing the page. It can't hurt and sometimes it'll save you the extra steps. Uh, if that doesn't work, then you will need to restart the computer and or try switching the com student to a different computer if it's already given you trouble. If you're doing that second option and you're restarting or changing the computers, you need to do these steps before the student re-enters the session name and password. So they can restart the computer, go to a different computer, but do not put in those letters and numbers for the session name and password that would bring them into the test. If you do that, they're going to be in the test and they're not going to be able to find their name in the list. And so if you're in that situation, the student has logged in uh, and can't find their name in the list and you know they're part of the testing session, then they're going to need to exit out and reopen the lockdown browser. So the first thing you do in this situation uh, is go to your proctor screen and check the student's name, the little box right next to the student's name. Then you'll go above to where it says select action and the action that you want is suspend. And it'll say, do you really want to do this? And you just say, okay. 
Uh, then you check the box next to the student's name again. And now you go to select action and you choose test again. And this is what puts their status back to awaiting student. And that's when they can input the information. Uh, and again, these words might make people a little bit nervous, uh, but even when they test again, they are going to go right back into the same test that they were already taking. And as I said, the student is now ready to test. They can just enter in that session name and password and pick their name from the list as they normally would. And then another thing to note is if this freeze happens after the student has been confirmed, but before he or she has begun testing, then instead of choosing suspend, you're going to need to choose the action do not confirm. So and it'll say for the student's status, confirmed. And then, but then when they go to take the test, again, they will not find their name in the list. And if you try to suspend them, it'll tell you you can't suspend somebody who is not testing. So the solution in this case is do not confirm. All right, and now for a quick run through uh, visually of how to do this. So uh, my student, not a really, has gotten a couple of questions into the test and her screen is frozen and so I need to move her to a different test. So here I go, I'm checking the box right here next to her name and I'm coming up here right above the list to where it says select action and I'm going to suspend and there's my warning. Are you sure that I really want to? Yes, I do, okay. And now we're not done. Again, if she were to sign back in, her name would not be in the list. So I'm checking it again, and I'm going back to select action. And this time, I the action I want is test again. again. And then now you see the status is once again a waiting student, which means her name is in the list. When she enters in the session name and password, she'll be able to start the test. And then when you go to confirm her, it's going to ask you if you want to resume the test that was already started. And of course, you will say, yes, that is what I want so that they don't have to start over. And then if this status, instead of saying awaiting student or testing or suspended, if it says, just says confirmed, but the student got kicked out, then when you go to select action, you'll select do not confirm instead. Right, and this should take care of uh, many of the problems that you'll run into, but of course, if it doesn't solve the problem or you run into something more serious, always give your friendly librarian a call and we'll come down to help you out. Thanks for watching and hope you found this helpful.